Hey guys, uh, so today will be a uh, time lapse of my uh, one, one of the latest pieces that I did. Um, I had a little bit of a like a, a two or three weeks dedicated to completing illustrations and uh, this one uh, was an idea I've been having for a long time. As you can see it started off with a sketch. I sketched that on the beach um, sometime in the summer and I just I couldn't shake it off. I loved the way she was sitting, how powerful she felt and I just wanted to bring it to life. Um, so I was going to talk about creating atmosphere, um, gesture, uh, maximizing your gesture, uh, prioritizing focal point. Uh, so the way to really pull off a, a pinup like this, this is a pinup, um, is by remembering that it's okay to stay symmetrical in the image. Um, it's not that bad. Pinups really are more like a splash, uh, something that you can animate. Um, they're really more uh, less about a standing character design or establishing an environment that much and more about the character just doing their personality, being their personality. It's all about their personality and obviously the sex appeal, uh, but the personality is very, very important. And her personality is uh, a little bit cocky, a little bit full of herself. Um, she's very, very confident. Um, and I also just wanted it to be a figure study in and of itself. I love the way... Uh, the lighting place shadows on uh, like a torso or the breasts and I just really wanted to give that a shot. Um, usually breasts when they're painted, they're painted to be so stiff um, but I like when they're a little bit more loose and natural and free falling um, so I found a couple of references that kind of inspired me. At the end I couldn't find any references that really were in the exact uh, position I liked so that's why you see me messing around with Portrait Studio so much. But um, one big thing that you can see in the, pre in the, in the final uh, compared to the process is that it's less green, it's more blue. Um, I like the green, I think I should have kept the green. I'm not so sure about the blue, but blue is never really a miss. Uh, but I did want to keep that eerie, um, uh, evil green, the evilness and green in concept art. I wanted to keep it. Um, here you can see me just detailing. The biggest thing about drawing figures is that you have to stay zoomed out so you can capture the greater movements of shadow, the greater tonal changes in the, in the figure. You cannot treat it like each individual area separate from the other. You have to, all, you have to melt it all together right at the start. So I really didn't care about detail um, uh, up until I started to probably work on the face. That's when I really started to zoom in. But because the face is so hidden, I made sure that the things that weren't hidden, I actually did finish them. A lot of the shadows that I did, like the shadow on the stomach, it really does take a lot of courage to just throw a massive shadow over everything, but sometimes they're absolutely necessary and you don't really pull off the form without a confident core shadow. Core shadow is everything because it's the most immediate response to the most immediate light source. Uh, you can't really cheat with a core shadow. So I knew that I just have to bite the bullet and cast that shadow along the stomach, even though it's hiding a lot. Uh, but that was the style that the, the, the light source that I chose and I knew I could probably re-light um, that entire area with some uh, secondary point light or something like that. Uh, so detailing the breasts was probably step one. I've really wanted that like tanned everywhere else except the breasts look that Frank Frazetta does. I love Frazetta's work. Obviously you can see it's very inspired by him, especially the green, which is why I regretted getting rid of the green. I like the green. Um, also very, very inspired about uh, from the Vraska uh, Regal Gorgon, Golgari Queen from um, uh, the, the new Ravnica set um, for Magic the Gathering. I really liked what they were doing. Uh, so that inspired me as well. I was just getting into magic when I was uh, in the summer when I was sketching this. So I really just wanted that pinup kind of style that you can see in a card. Um, so now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with the face. I'm not so concerned about the face. I do spend quite a bit of time on it later on, but definitely not more time than the figure. The figure is the most important thing. Her leaning back, all of that was what I prioritized in Portrait Studio, what I sculpted in Portrait Studio. I wanted that perspective as much as possible. Um, as for uh, managing the tone, managing the atmosphere, as long as things stayed dark um, and as long as things stayed mysterious, that's what kept it going. So revealing her breasts, you don't really know who you're looking at just by seeing breasts. So that was okay to reveal. But the fact that her face was hidden did a lot for the painting because it was a form of mystery added as well as the, the danger. Uh, so mystery and danger, that's exactly what you think of when you're trying to combine themes for a dark kind of like cavernous uh, cave environment or underground um, catacombs kind of thing. 
So here I am mapping out with some simple pencil where I imagined everything else to be. I did want her to have four arms kind of interacting with the snakes in their own way. Um, and I did want to uh, have each hand uh, have a, like a specific gesture to it, but it was getting a bit busy, especially because I was going to be adding those little fairies, which I under rendered on purpose. Uh, the painting does look a little bit symmetrical for me now towards the end, but I, I feel like symmetrical is exactly what it should have been. The way she was posed, the way she was looking at the camera, a throne room, usually everything's pretty symmetrical in a throne room, even if she is a snake creature. Um, she'll still have some kind of symmetry in her royalty or her regality on her throne and her power or her dominion over her catacombs. So I was I was kind of you know getting okay with this symmetry. I try not to have too much symmetry, but I usually find myself drawing divine characters or superior powerful characters, and I always realize okay well they need some symmetry. They can't be represented with a a mess of a of a composition, or even if it's a pretty mess. Um, so the Grey Witch, also very divine, kind of casting out her divine power. Um, there was another painting I was starting, which I kind of gave up on. Uh, the White Witch, also very, very symmetrical. Um, so I was, I'm, I'm understand, as long as you understand why you're using symmetry and the composition can fall into place properly according to the story, then you really have nothing to worry about. Um, here I am messing around with the first couple of hands that I drew. I really wanted to throw in some spots, but I gave up on those because they were more more small floaty things towards the lower half of the camera and that was just going to um, cast more trouble for the little fairies so I, I wasn't rendering the fairies right away but maybe I should have so I could have measured better but because they were going to be ghostly I didn't feel like I had to render them right away but I did have to place them so I placed them in brought in the first flame started realizing okay this is a symmetrical place it doesn't make sense to have light only on one area so I had light coming in from another area not necessarily the lamp the lamps aren't really casting enough light in this foggy scene to be revealed but that's what I intended at first but one side didn't make sense to have that much light on it because the primary light source was coming in um, so the arm should have had some light on it. So it kind of got a little bit confusing and messy. I got away with a lot. I really did. I got, got away with a lot, but um, I sh probably should have measured things out early on. That's definitely something that my friend critiqued me on, and I really <laughs> appreciate him for saying that. Map it out first. I did map it out. That's the thing. I already had map I had mapped out everything, but I hadn't decided any kind of throne room accessories, any kind of architecture or anything. I just thought she was just chilling on her uh, crystalline throne or her rocky throne. I didn't expect to want to use some extra sh uh, some extra lights to reveal some areas dr uh, drowned in shadow. So me falling in love with light, obviously, I want more light and more light effects as much as I can. So I ended up adding those lights without planning for them. Uh, which is not a good thing. Uh, so I, again, it's a learning experience. Now I know how I want a painting to go, and when it's got, when it has too much shadow in it, especially being a portrait artist and the face is completely covered in shadow, I just couldn't live with that. So I added those extra little lights in the end, and then I just confused the secondary balance light on the far on her right uh, uh, on her far right. Uh, so. Here I am working on the face. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with the face. I love her expression. I really want to go for it. And the original sketch that you saw, the pencil sketch, that was a very powerful expression she had. So I didn't want to lose too much of it. She does look um, more devious in the previous than it what does in the final. And that's another thing I want to talk about. Some of the things that I don't like about the decisions I made. I like the green that it had before. I don't like the blue. I might go back and edit it and get rid of some of it. I didn't like the way I drew the fairies. I probably would have gone back and redrawn some of it. Maybe a smaller snake that she has, a smaller pet snake or her children or something like that that she could have had. I think that I should have had a little bit more light behind her revealing her silhouette. Some kind of extra little glow or illumination or relief in the back between the, the, between the pillars of the catacombs. Maybe something in the back. Um, maybe some uh, um, Iron Maidens in the back or something like that. Uh, I don't know, something dark. I think her left hand is a little bit twisted. The knuckles are too far apart. It feels like she's spreading the knuckles, even though we've established that she has perfectly proportionate human-like hands with her right hand. That I need to correct as soon as possible. Whenever I find the time, I'll probably go back and fix this up. Um, then I, what I don't like is how a kind of kind of the, the tail just kind of disappears. Um, I don't know what happened to the illumination of her tail on the final, but I guess it just disappeared. There was supposed to be some more light on her tail um, from the lamp nearby. That disappeared completely. Uh, that I didn't like. I didn't like that the tail is just gone. You can hardly 
tell if she's a snake. Um, so a lot of good things, a lot of bad things, and that's what we expect out of out of masterpiece, quote, quote unquote masterpieces or masterpiece attempts. This is definitely an attempt for me. Um, it's not something that I would call as my crowning achievement. Grey Witch is probably closer to that than this one, but I did draw this one a bit rushed right after the Grey Witch. I was just having like this explosive desire to uh, do as many illustrations as I can while I had my vacation. Um, so I, I did what I could with what time I had, and by the time I you know, kind of just completely ran out of energy and was ready to rest instead of work on my vacation. I was sick of seeing this painting. Um, so actually, I do I do jump into the Grey Witch to edit it a little bit. Um, I, I, yeah, I do cancel out that other two hands. I didn't like them very much because they just added more busyness because the hands were never going to be in the light. They were going to be tossed behind her. They're coming out of her back. And we already have snakes who are, who are creating silhouettes on top of her head. So I did have some creative liberty and I was capable of canceling out a lot of the original designs that I had. Um, so I got rid of the hands because you couldn't even tell they were there because the snakes were taking up the space. Um, I do like the effect with the purple and blue uh, uh, kind of flame. It's kind of like a magical flame or something like that. Um, I do like the fog effect. There was a lot of the original stuff that I had that I really, really loved and I should have kept it. I do want to try some scales on her whenever I get back into finishing her up. I do want to try some scales and some uh, just any kind of surface detail, any discoloration or pattern, maybe even sculpt it first. As you can see, I do try scales, but I do not like this brush. I hate this brush. It feels very uh, cheap, the, the, the texture style, and I don't like when things start to get way too Photoshop filter dependent and not hand painted. It starts to feel very disgusting. It feels like you're, you know, just pasting one layer on top of the other hoping for a cool effect and even when it does look good it doesn't compare to someone who hand painted in some scales some scales even if it's not perfectly hand painted in it was at least attempted as um, a representation of the scales the way a master would do it on some with some oil paint on some canvas uh, so I, I do wish that I had tried that a little bit but uh, it's really it's not um, uh, something that should have been hand painted like in full detail because it's so far down the lower half of the canvas You still have to be very very careful with how much detail you're applying It always has to be a representation of the detail So if you shrunk your brush to like size 5 or size 2 on the face by the time you get to the f farthest lowest edge of the canvas You should be at minimal 100 um, in size uh, like proportionately I'm just using general terms but your brush size should be way bigger than anything near the focal point. So even if you're doing scales, and your scale brush can shrink as you go on, your scale brush can um, uh, shrink as you get closer to her. That's also because of the perspective and how close she is to the canvas. Um, but yeah, that's really it. That's all that went into this. A lot of referencing for the hands. I do want to talk about the hands, uh, but I'm just going to talk about the eye size real quick. Her eye size was very large starting out, which I really liked, but it made her look cute. I wanted her to look a little bit dangerous. And uh, dangerous also can equate to ugly. Um, so we have to, you know, kind of sacrifice cute for, 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 for scary sometimes. And that's what we have to do. Uh, shrink the eyes. That's where it all starts. Uh, shrink the eyes, enlarge the mouth, widen the mouth. That's always going to be scary. Um, really widening the mouth, like making her smile seem like she can swallow your whole head with one bite. Um, uh, that's like, kind of like that lower half um, Pac-Man kind of width in the mouth. Really a super scary tool to use while you're um, painting. So the hands, uh, the biggest problem with the hands was just finding a gesture that I liked. Every time I found a reference that I really liked or sketched out a hand gesture that I liked, I painted it in and it just didn't seem to represent her. Uh, so I tried kind of like um, uh, acting out some of some hand gestures because you have to have hand gestures that she would do in this position. She she wouldn't just do any some any any kind of soft hand gesture. She's not necessarily a softy. She's not a soft person. She's obviously a dark, um, kind of twisted person. So I want a hand gesture that seems a little bit more twisted. Um, so what I asked, what, what, when I, my, my uh, student, Linny, she kind of posed some for me, which is, I'm really grateful for because she saved me with the other hand. But this, this other hand on the side still bothered me so much. I loved how twisty it was, 
but either because of my lack of skill or because it just didn't click with me, I didn't want to keep working on the hand. Um, something about it just, I didn't like how the fingers kind of stacked. I didn't like how the knuckles were missing. I like showing off the knuckles. I think she should have shown as much knuckle as possible because it just adds that danger factor when you show off really overgrown knuckles. Like she climbs a lot or she uses her hands a lot or she's on her hands while she's slithering. Um, her hand just looked a little too delicate here without the knuckles. So, um, it kind of looked like a princess reaching for a strawberry. I didn't like it. Um, and it wasn't bony enough and I just, I, I did not, it just, it just didn't work. And there were proportion issues now that I look at it uh, like a month or two after I drew it. There are definite proportion problems. Uh, so that could have also been an addition to why I just didn't want that hand. And also she wasn't reaching for anything. There wasn't anything there she was reaching for. I would have added a skull, but it would have added a point of interest all the way to the far right of the canvas, all right. Uh, so I just didn't, I didn't go for it. Um, I was trying really hard not to interrupt the focal point to the point where I, I initially wanted the eyes to glow on each and every single snake. I wanted the snakes to have like this bioluminescence to them and the subsurface scattering to them. But she would have been too much of a, a silhouette for me to really enjoy that. Um, and I didn't want it to be a big glowing sun behind her. This is the dark cavernous scene. You can barely see her. And when you do see her, she's just there chilling, ready to eat you alive or... Or, or order your execution. She wasn't supposed to have a big glowy light behind her that would have shown through the snakes and revealed their kind of bone structure or the little ribs of the snake. I, that's a cool effect, yeah, no doubt, but I just couldn't fit it into this, cav uh, this cavern and this uh, composition just wouldn't allow a disruption of the focal point. Uh, so I even canceled those out. So I couldn't add in another skull. I couldn't add in even every single little eye, even one eye, one glowy eye of the snakes I couldn't add it in. Everything felt like it kept interrupting. So I just followed my instinct and completely got rid of the hand. But it's still cool seeing how, you know, I eventually rendered it, kind of figured out the way around the, the form and the anatomy. Um, but I still couldn't like it. I still couldn't enjoy Kind of what it was adding to the painting it was pointing the hand away from the canvas i wanted something to point back up to her head going from her head down to her other right hand and then back down to the fairies and they create this constant circle this that entraps the viewer into kind of just sticking to the painting and not leaving it the other hand kind of invited them to leave the painting or look at the lamps the lamps should have just been accessories they shouldn't have invited too much attention or um, hover, hover, kind of like allowing the eyes to hover there. Um, they're very under-rendered, it's just a simple color. Yes, it adds contrast, but it kind of also traps in the character in the painting. Uh, so I, I didn't feel like the lamps were interrupting, more bringing the painting together and filling in some empty spaces. So I ended up changing the hand, I ended up adding some smoke, which was really nice. I added like this pillar effect on either side of the painting. I, by this time I was already okay with the symmetry. I was getting, um, you know, getting to be a little bit more comfortable with the symmetry. I understood that yes, she was regal. She had to sit there and probably something is there um, to warm her up. She is a snake, so that means that she's cold blooded. She might need a little bit more lamps closer to her to keep her warm. I don't know, something, anything that would have kind of rationalized putting in two little lamps beside her. But it looks good at the end of the day, so I didn't have to think too hard about it. And that's kind of what happens. Your viewers aren't going to think that hard. Your viewers aren't going to think like we do. Um, they're not going to be bothered with that. We will think like that because we're crazy and we overthink our paintings and that's usually why they, fall, like, why they fail. But um, try to just follow along with what looks good. Even if you break the lighting sequence and it makes no sense, Nothing but an artist will see it. Definitely not a viewer or a user in a game or something like that or the splash. Uh, an artist will definitely see it if you break too many rules or use too much um, uh, uh, kind of like cheating to get away with something. Uh, but, but you know, there's, there, there's a line where you can cheat a little bit just so you can sneak in some bounce light that's coming off from the side of the studio. That's okay, but you can't really cheat your way out of core shadows. You can't really cheat your way out of good composition. So you have to take it by ear and stay rational about what you can cheat with and what you can't. Um, and I consider those little lamps a kind of a cheat. They're kind of like a, a way I got away with too much symmetry by adding even more and then making it a throne room. What I initially intended 
Yeah, she was supposed to be a queen leaning back, watching someone get executed or something crazy like that. Uh, but I also wanted her to feel wild. I didn't want her to feel like she actually had a throne room she sat in and ruled from. There's no bureaucracy in the catacombs. She just, she's just, you know, a wild creature that dominates and she's bigger than everything else. So those spirits are proportionate to human size. So she's really huge. Um, obviously the spirits look like they're, they're kind of like little elf, but I would have, wa I wanted to add one more cool little feature, which I might do when I go back to it. She has a pet human, the character that I wrote. Um, she has a pet human that she just keeps. So that pet human would have been there to create some scale comparison. And that pet human is kind of like a mystical character. So they're kind of always glowing white. Um, and she just keeps them around. She keeps them trapped, like kind of like a Persephone. Uh, Hades kind of situation um, and she doesn't let them go they help her with her magic and it's a boss that you have to fight eventually in this game world that I'm thinking of so that would have been better but I thought a couple more spirits under rendered wouldn't have just had one sitting character on her tail kind of just cutting the canvas in half completely I would have you know created a better sequence a stairway of focal point all the way up to her from those spirits as you kind of look at the closest spirit and the farthest spirit moving up so I know a lot of composition talk but it really is very very is that's the thing that makes us fail a bad composition that's what makes us give up you can always you know you can render breasts until the sun goes down or I don't know what the term is <laughs> yeah for, for, until the cows come home uh, but they're not gonna make a painting they're not gonna make an illustration they're not gonna make a, an actual full scene work uh, breasts alone are not going to work hands alone are not going to work neither is the face if you want an illustration it's all composition even if you under render all components of the composition the composition at least is complete um so having the multiple characters uh the multiple fairies leading the eye up was better maybe i could have painted them better i think i just really lazed out with those i could have made every single one better but i just did not want to be bothered with erasing them and trying something different I kind of liked how they look and they seem to work okay and I'm kind of just thinking about it as a, a studio environment. Do I really want to rework this? Am I really being paid enough to rework this? No one was paying me to do this. I was just getting lazy. Um, so I'm like, okay, the fairies seem to work. I'm sure this combination of gestures is just fine. It'll work just fine. Uh, so the moral of the story is composition first organize that first understand what kind of lighting you're going to need later if you're an artist who loves lighting prepare for you know, multiple light sources that you're going to throw at yourself when you're already done the main character lucky for me i had cast a shadow from a really really nice light source at the top so i could sneak in a couple bounce lights but what about the bounce light that was in the direction of the main light source now that's what confused me and threw me off um I do, I do think I should do more hand studies. <laughs> I got away with it this time because I had some great reference. Always use your reference. That's one of the biggest reasons why our drawing sucks because we don't use reference. But still, do as many studies as you can so you can expose yourself to the requirements for core shadows when it comes to hands. Um, uh, face, hands, and breasts are not going to carry the illustration. It's all composition and understand that you're still telling a story so you have rules you cannot break. You can't just suddenly bring in a light that just breaks the entire image of the painting or the atmosphere you were going for. And then the atmosphere itself is a culmination of uh, the character's personality as you present them to the viewer, as if the viewer has also walked through these catacombs and has just seen her talking or, or kind of like uh, tapping her nails on her throne or something like that. And they suddenly looked at her. What would she say? What would she do? So you can't reveal her face right away. You got to like animate that, uh, hide the face and then do the face reveal later um, uh, when it's like final boss time. But you can reveal the things that uh, dictate kind of who she is and what she is. She's a seductress. She probably pretends to be full human. She probably draws men into the water. She probably hunts like that. She, would, she probably preys on men. Um, so all of that seductive nudity at the top really helped create that atmosphere. But you also have her face hidden and her sharp nails and her knuckles visible. All of that is all danger, 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 um, layered levels of danger in the mystery, plus green and blue and magic and floating spirits. You have yourself a, a, an atmosphere. And most importantly, always, 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 the question of the day is what is the light environment? It is the absolute question to ask. You always have to start off your canvas with the right value in mid-tone. You cannot, or like tone, period. It doesn't have to be a mid-tone. 
uh, but uh, if you're starting off a really light canvas and you want it to eventually become dark, you are going to have the toughest time dropping your values. Start dark so you know exactly you're surrounding yourself with the required uh, value reference, and that way you're never going to find yourself way too light to represent the spirit of the painting that you're going for. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next month. Bye.